This is the third video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we'll be looking at solutions and concentrations as well as how to carry out mole calculations. In this video we will look at how to calculate the concentrations of solutions in gram per dm cubed. We will look at how we can describe the amount of a substance in grams, moles or number of particles. We will make sure we can convert between mass and moles. And finally, we will convert concentrations between grams per dm cubed and moles per dm cubed. Here we have four different elements with different masses. We have 32 grams of sulfur, 56 grams of iron, 24 grams of magnesium and 12 grams of carbon. So the question is, what's the link? Well, if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that the values on the slide here are the values for the molecular mass. This means that we have one mole of each of these. So we can say that the molar mass of a substance is another way of saying the mass of one mole. So the mass of one mole of sulphur would be 32 grams. The mole of one gram of iron would be 56 grams. So, instead of writing out relative atomic mass in grams, we write mole. As we saw on the previous slide, the relative atomic mass in grams of carbon is 12. Therefore, a mole of carbon is also 12 grams. This means that simply a mole is the name given to a certain number. In order to work with moles, we need to be aware of Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant states that a mole is equal to this many atoms, or more simply, 6.023 times 10 to the 23. When we get precisely this number of particles of any element or compound, then we have exactly one mole, as they will weigh exactly the same number of grams as the relative atomic mass. This means that one mole of atoms or molecules of any substance will have a mass in grams equal to the relative formula mass for that substance. This means we can work out the molar mass. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance and is equal to the relative atomic mass. For example, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, so one mole of carbon atoms would have a mass of 12 grams. Likewise, aluminium, which has a relative atomic mass of 27, so one mole would have a mass of 27 grams. And finally, we can use it to work out the molar mass for compounds, such as sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide has a relative formula mass of 40. So two moles of sodium hydroxide would have a mass of twice the formula mass. So the mass of two moles would be equal to 40 times 2, so therefore 80 grams. In the exam, you need to be able to carry out mole calculations. This can be in order to calculate the mass of substance from the number of moles and vice versa. This means that we need to know two formulas. The first of these is the mass in grams of the element or compound, which is equal to the number of moles times by the MR of the element or compound. The second is the number of moles is equal to the mass in grams over the MR. We can then rearrange these equations into a triangle to give us the mass over the moles times the MR. When using this triangle, simply cover up whichever part of the triangle you're trying to calculate. For example, if you were trying to work out the MR, you would cover up the MR, giving you mass over moles. We will now look at some calculation questions using this. Here we have a selection of practice questions using the moles equals mass over MR equation. I'd like to pause the video at this point, practice the calculations, and then come back to the video. So, in order to calculate these questions, we need to use the moles equals mass over MR equation. For the first one, we have two moles of carbon dioxide and an MR of 44. They've been asked to work out the mass. In order to do this, we simply times the number of moles by the MR, giving us a mass of 88 grams. 
Likewise, for the second question, we also need to work out the mass. This time we have half a mole, so our mass is going to be half of the MR, giving us a mass of 22 grams. For the third question, we need to mix things up. This time we have been given the mass and the MR and asked to work out our moles. So we need to do our mass divided by our MR, our 4.4 divided by our 44, giving us a moles of 0.1 moles of carbon dioxide. The next two questions use the same principles. The first one, we are given one mole and an MR, so we need to times these together to give us a mass of 18 grams of water. And then the second one, we've got to work out the moles. We are given the mass and the MR, so we need to do 4.5 divided by 18 to give us a moles of 0.25 moles. For the final two questions, we have been given moles of x and y. All this means is that we haven't been given the MR. We cannot look the MR up in the periodic table. In order to work out our MR, we need to do our mass divided by our moles. So for the first one, for x, we need to do 73 divided by 2 to give us an MR of 36.5. As we have an MR of 36.5, this would suggest that X would have various different isotopes. If you think back to C2 and for chlorine and for copper's MR, this suggests that we have multiple isotopes. Finally, for Y, we are given the mass and we are given the moles. This time we need to do 40 divided by 0.5 to give us an MR of 80. It is important to note you do not get given the moles equals mass over MR equation, unlike in the Edexcel P3 tutorial videos and for the exam for the P3 exam. So you do need to make sure that you can remember how to use it. We can also use moles to look at the concentration of a solution. A concentration is how much solute is dissolved in a certain amount of solution. And it can be measured in either grams per dm cubed, which is the mass concentration, or moles per dm cubed, which is the mole concentration. Before we look at calculating concentrations, you do also need to be able to convert between different units of volume. The two most common in chemistry are centimetre cubed and decimeter cubed. Here is one centimeter cubed and for comparison here is one decimeter cubed. One decimeter cubed is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed. Here we have four conversion questions. Again I would like you to pause the video, work out the conversion and then restart the video. So we have 1,250 centimetres cubed, which is equal to 1.25 dm cubed, 1 centimetre cubed, which is equal to 0.001 dm cubed, 0.056 dm cubed, which is equal to 56 cm cubed, and finally 1.28 dm cubed, which is 1,280 cm cubed. So, once again, concentration is how much of a chemical there is in this fixed volume, in grams per dm cubed or mole per dm cubed, as we previously looked at. For comparison, we have a solution of low concentration here, or a dilute concentration. We can see there are many, many water molecules and very, very few solute molecules. Likewise, on the other side, we have a high concentration or a strong concentration where we have relatively few water or solvent particles. However, we have lots and lots of solute particles here. For example, a salt or a sugar. To calculate the concentration of a substance, you can use one of the two formula below. The first one, we've got our concentration in grams per dm cubed, which is equal to the mass of the substance over the volume or we can work out our concentration by doing the amount of solute in moles over the volume. So this one on the right would give us our moles per dm cubed. 
There are four questions beneath here. We've got a solution of 10 grams of salt in one dm cubed of water, where it is asking for it in grams per dm cubed. In order to do this, we would simply take our grams and divide it by our volume, give, giving us a concentration of 10 grams per dm cubed. For our second question, this time it wants the answer in moles per dm cubed. So we have got our moles here, our two moles of hydrochloric acid in 500 centimetres of water. However, as the question is asking for the answer in moles per dm cubed, we first need to convert our centimetres cubed to dm cubed. 500 centimetres cubed is equal to 0.5 dm cubes. So therefore, we do our 2 divided by our 0.5, giving us a moles per dm cubed concentration of 4. I now want you to pause the video to work out the final two questions, making sure you pay attention to the units that have been given. giving us an answer of 50 grams per dm cubed as we had 10,000 grams of salt in 200 decimeters cubed of water. And then finally, we have our 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide in our 0.1 dm cubes of water, giving us a concentration of 5 moles per dm cubed. The final calculations you can be asked to do are to convert concentrations, this time from moles dm cubed into grams dm cubed or from grams dm cubed into moles dm cubed. Initially, these can look quite scary. However, all you need to do is use the moles equals mass over MR equation that we used previously. So you are looking to work out the grams we have here. In order to do that, we take our moles, in this case 0.5, and calculate our MR of sodium hydroxide. Taking our AR of sodium, our AR of the oxygen, and of the hydrogen. This gives us a value of 40. We then do 0.5 times 40 to give us an answer of 20 grams per dm cubed. Again, pause the video at this point, look to work out the grams per dm cubed of the HCl, the moles per dm cubed of the NaCl, and finally the moles per dm cubed of the CaCl2. You should have got answers of 73 grams per dm cubed for the hydrochloric acid, 0.34 moles per dm cubed of the sodium chloride, and finally, for the calcium chloride, a value of 4.5 moles per dm cubed. This concludes today's video for the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. In the next video, we will look at how to carry out a titration, how to calculate titration equations, as well as how we can prepare soluble salts.